Welcome to this quick video of using Flow with batch jobs in Spring XD. So the old version of Flow worked for visually composing your streams. This new version you can run in XD13 is for visually composing your jobs, so orchestrating your jobs. So I've got an XD13 running here. Most of the standard modules are registered with a couple of extra ones. These B simple, B simple 2. They're both variants of the batch simple example um, that you can get off GitHub. Um, it does nothing, but what I'm here is I'm, I'm showing you orchestration, not how complicated you can make a batch job. So batch simple will just complete normally straight away. Batch simple 2 will actually exit via uh, a failed status so that we can see what happens when jobs fail in an orchestration. Based on those very simple modules, I created some uh, rudimentary definitions. So we've got load database. We got create report, which might take that database data and turn it into a report. Email report sends it around and a tidy up job. So these are meant to be slightly more representative of the real world, but obviously they're based on these modules that don't actually do anything under the covers. And we're going to use these to compose a job. So uh, the UI looks a little similar to what we have for streams, only the user's got a bit more power this time. Um, the depth palette is filled with some control nodes. I'm not going to cover those in this video. That's for a future, more advanced video. Uh, but you'll see definitions is everything I just showed you on the definitions page ready to use in the job you're going to build. So every job has a start and an end. And you'll get these red markers if there's any problems with your job. So this says nothing, nothing's leading to end state. So there's no, no real job here. So let's create something. So I am going to drag out uh, load database. And I'm going to drag out create report. First simple job. You see, I created it by dragging out the modules and then drawing in the links. There is a slightly faster way if you drag out, if you already have the links and you just want to insert modules into that flow, you can just drop them on. You'll see their highlights say I'm going to drop into this flow. And where's the other one? Create report. Drop that onto here. So you see what we've done now is we didn't have to do any fiddling with links and we built the same thing. If you open the DSL view, you'll see the jobs DSL is slightly different to the streams DSL. Um, this is how you express a job flow, so a number of things to run in a sequence and using this double pipe notation to join them together. So let's define that compose job. Now if we jump onto the definitions page, we'll see it. And we can expand Compose jobs on here to get a view of them, a picture of them. It can be helpful when the DSL gets a bit complicated. It should be ready to go on the deployments page. Demo one, let's launch it. That will make it run, and then we should see the results of that run on the executions page. So it's already completed because remember, those simple things do nothing. So we see that it did a load database and the create report. It worked great. Now, not all jobs succeed every time. So let's do something a bit more elaborate. So I'm going to start out the same. So we're going to load the database. We're going to use create report X. Talk about why in a minute. And then I'm going to email that report. So, uh, this is the same as before. Create Report X is a variant of Create Report that uses that job module that's hard coded to fail. So, this guy is going to exit with a failed exit status in batch terms. Now, these solid lines tend to represent what happens in the happy path when every job completes successfully. If your jobs are going to have different exit statuses, you can actually define alternative flows. So here I'm adding in a tidy up job, but I only want it to run if this job exits via failure. And if it completes normally, I want to run an email report. So I, when I hover on the link, you'll see I get a cog. Click on that and it tells me I'm setting the properties for this link between these two jobs. And I can set the job exit status. So now you can see there that if create report X fails, we'll run tidy up. If it succeeds, we'll run email report. This job's well formed, let's, let's run it. 
So again, jump into deployments, it should be ready to go. And launch that. Jump to executions, open it up. And you'll see what happened is, yep, the load database ran. That succeeded, finished with completed. Create report X ran and X advised failure. And that caused us to take that transitional link to the tidy up job, which then completed normally. So there's no sign of the email report running. Okay. So that's how you can do simple flows and then uh, introduce conditional flows depending on the job exit status that comes out of a job. Now, you can run things in parallel, uh, doing a split in batch terms. So suppose I have multiple jobs, in fact, that can load up a database. Uh, I've got three here. Let's connect those up. So none of these links are being made conditional. This is saying I want to run these three things. At the same time, if I can. So this says create reports only going to run once these three guys have been done. Look at the DSL, how's that expressed? This is how you express a split. So the angle brackets demarcate the beginning and end, and then the ampersand indicate what you want to run in parallel. So here we got load database to run in parallel with load database two in parallel with load database X. And there's nothing to stop you um, mixing up these splits and flows. So suppose I have I'm gonna run let's just grab a random job. So now I've said that these single jobs are running in parallel with these two jobs that are gonna run in sequence. And I haven't shown you this yet, but uh, to create nicer graphs you can break up these links. Just click in the middle of them and you'll get a a point you can move. Create yourself some nice graphs and then take some screenshots to the documentation. So yeah, what does the DSL look like for that? You can see we've just mixed the concepts. So low database in par parallel with low database two in parallel with this flow of these two things. Now you can mix these things up with the transitional links as well. So, uh, load database X may exit with a failure. So we can create a additional link here. For failed, and move that up to. So if the database X completes normally, we'll run demo two. If otherwise, we'll run tidy up, and then we'll run create report because these guys may have put something useful in the database anyway. So that's how you build basic flows and splits using um, flow, and how you use transitional links. There is more stuff you can do, including why you need these control nodes, but that's for a future video. Thank you for watching.